Hey y'all, it's your girl Tasia Lachey here and we are back with another video. So in today's video, we're gonna tell the difference between a booth renter versus a commission-based stylist slash employee. So at the end, I will share what I recommend and what my journey was, but I do want to start with booth rent. So as what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with booth rent and then I'll get into commission. So as a booth renter, you are your own boss. Basically an independent contractor is what they call you. I would say this is great for someone who likes to be in charge of everything, likes to be independent and likes to do all the creatives and have creative freedom when it comes to their business. So number one, I've, I've basically marked them down to nine different categories. Um, so number one, you can set your own hours, your own rates, and come up with your own specials. Number two, you can choose your own products and services that you want to offer. Number three, all supplies and materials are your responsibility as the booth renter. There's nobody buying your supplies for you, you are buying your own supplies, making sure that you are stocked, have enough supplies for the clients that you do have coming in. Number four, you are in charge of getting your own clients. So if you are working at a salon and you chose to go the booth front option, they are not getting the hour, they are not getting the clients for you. You are getting your own clients. So with that, it does take more time. I will say a con with that, it does take more time to build your own clientele because especially if you don't know really how to get clients, you're gonna it's gonna take you a while longer to get clientele. Number five, you are in charge of paying yourself. Meaning when you check your own clients, you have to make sure you know where that money is going and you basically pay yourself out. Either you wanna pay yourself out every day, every week, or two weeks. That is up to you. Number six, I would say more so this is like a con. Your pay can differ depending on what your day-to-day, -day, by week-to-week -week clients look like versus a commission stylist. Number seven, you do pay for your own insurance. Meaning product insurance, um, space insurance if need be. More so, you're more so trying to get covered for your products, products and services that you offer. Number eight, you do manage your own booking. So that is up to you to find out which booking site you wanna use. I know for my salon, we use Acuity. Um, there's Gloss Genius, there's Square, there's Vigaro, there's Style Seat, there's Schedulosity, there's Set More, there's Book C. There are a lot of different booking sites. You just have to kind of go through all the features and see what works out best for you and which one you think your clients will like better and which would be more convenient for the client and you, of course, as well. Number nine, your marketing and advertising is all on you. So for me, if I, re I recommend if you go the booth rent option, you better be on YouTube, you better hire you a coach, you better Google how to get clients, all of that jazz, so that way you're not just paying booth rent and not getting clients. We don't we don't want that to become a thing. We want clients so that we can put our booth rent and that way we can have money on the side too to do pay our bills, um, get supplies, to do extra our extracurricular activities or whatever lifestyle you live, however you want to do, you want to travel, we want to make sure we have money for that. You want to be able to make sure you know how to market and advertise if you do choose the booth rent option. Next we're gonna talk about a commission based stylist. So basically with this, you are an employee. You are a W-2 employee. This is great for someone that wants to start learning how a salon works and actually likes structure versus creating their own rules, policies, and procedures. Um, so number one, the owner slash salon manager sets your prices and your scheduling and they come up with specials so you don't have to do that versus with booth rent you do. Number two, the manager slash owner comes up with the services slash products you offer. So if you go into a salon, they already have their services that they offer that they wanna offer unless they add on services. When you come up into a salon, you should already know like pricing for the services you're gonna be giving their clients or your clients and your schedule. It's not any flexibility with your schedule unless you have a really nice manager that lets you know you kind of work your schedule how you want but for the most part they're making up your schedule for you each week number three the salon provides the supplies and materials i think that's the best part like if you don't want to have to worry about that after school you might want to go into a salon as a commission-based stylist employee because i feel like for me that's like or for someone that might be the biggest headache like you don't know what products you want to use and then like, what if a product doesn't work? Now you're trying to try new products. So honestly, as a 
commission based it's a, it's a pro that the salon provides the products and materials for you number four the salon provides the clients so you're not out here fumbling trying to get clientele trying to pay that booth rent if you are a booth renter so versus a commission base getting the clientele for you so that's a pro you don't have to worry about it. they just are basically thrown clients are thrown at you number five the salon is in charge of paying you so basically you're either if you're a commission-based stylist slash employee you're either going to be paid weekly or bi-weekly most of the time unless it's changed a little bit you're going to be paid bi-weekly and as a commission-based stylist how you're paid is some salons are either 60 40 i know my salon is 60 40 um, some salons do 50 50 or some salons do 30 70. so basically 60 40 the salon keeps 60 percent you take 40 and you keep your tips 50 50 the salon takes 50 you take 50. um 30 30 70 you get 30 percent of your services and all your tips and the salon gets 70 percent so yes, you basically get paid either of those ways, but the salon is in charge of paying you. Number six, you do get more consistent pay with commission, being a commission-based stylist slash employee versus a booth renter. Because you're at a salon, hopefully you're at a salon that's either, you know, knows how to do their marketing and is getting clientele or is already established. So basically by the time you start, clients are getting thrown at you. Like, I know for me, I worked at European Wax Center as a receptionist. This was before, this is before I went to beauty school, but I worked at European Wax Center as a receptionist. And that, that franchise is commission based. So with that franchise as well, like people have been going to European Wax Center for a very long time. So you're gonna know what you're getting paid because clients are coming in to get waxes however whatever they're getting body waxing versus if you were to be a booth renter and start waxing on your own we don't know what you're getting paid number seven you are covered under the salon's insurance so your salon should have basically you covered under your insurance so you don't have to worry about that so that's like a pro that's a less headache for you to try to find out sometimes SD cosmetologists, whatever beauty, if you're a nail artist, all of that insurance can be very expensive. So when your salon covers it, I look at that as a pro. Number eight, the salon manages your booking. The salon manages your booking. If that ain't a pro, I don't know what it is. When the salon manages your booking, that's just so much easier for you. Basically, they've already put their booking site, how it works. They just kind of show you how it works. Um, you know if you get that advantage basically the salon manages your booking for you so you can kind of be able to see from day to day who's coming in what clients you don't have to really worry about booking canceling rescheduling people the salon is going to do that for you i think that's honestly the best that's the biggest headache for me as being a salon owner is rescheduling people canceling people re refunding people that is all on me that is not on my girl's job so that's a pro if you are a commission-based stylist slash employee you don't have to worry about any of that and number nine like the last one, like the booth rent was, um, the salon does the marketing for you. The salon does the marketing for you. Let's get into it. The salon does the marketing for you. Honestly, that's a that's a big pro too. Like, if you don't know how to get clients, market, use your social media handles, pass out cards, flyers, get on Google, get on Facebook, get in these Facebook groups. That's fine. The salon does it for you. So at my salon, obviously, I have commission-based people. I have commission-based girls. So I'm doing all the marketing and advertising for them. Luckily for me, I like and I enjoy and I find some fun in doing that. So that's a pro for me. Bigger salons, I can only imagine what they're going through with the headache, trying to you know make sure they're definitely wide known and reached and really getting that clientele in there like i said the salon does the marketing for you that is a big big pro you don't have to worry about any of that lastly i wanted to get into why i chose to be independent right after school so for me i do come from an entrepreneur entrepreneurial background so for me like i never envisioned myself working for anybody i chose to be independent just because i felt like i worked jobs where i was they made my schedule um controlled my pay i didn't like any of that for me personally i like to be in charge of everything i, I need to know what i'm making um 
I want to make my own prices. I want to make my own schedule. The reason why I chose to be independent right after school was mainly because of the scheduling. If I want to take off a weekend, I'm a weekend. Obviously, if you are in the video industry, you know that weekends, it's 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 almost like don't even ask for a weekend off because that's when you're getting the majority of your clients is on a weekend. So for me, scheduling was a big thing. So if I want to take off Saturday, I'm going to do that. I want to take off a Sunday, I'm going to do that. I want to work four, th three to four hours a day, I'm going to do that. So I would say as a booth renter, that would be more so a pro and with a commission, you don't have that advantage. What do I recommend you do right outside of school? This can go a couple of ways. If you are already in school and feel like you're already independent, you have somebody that you know, or it's in the beauty industry, or you just have knowledge, I would recommend try going by yourself. You're gonna have, hic I would say this, you're gonna have hiccups whether you're a commission stylist or a booth renter. Clients sometimes aren't, weren't, aren't gonna be as consistent whether you are a booth renter or a commission-based stylist, especially like if you're commission-based. Right now we are in January, so salons are a lot slower because of the holiday season. You're always gonna have little hiccups in your journey. So just be prepared for them and you know, just take them day by day. Now, for someone that's in school and they're like, they're scared, they don't want all that, headache of getting clientele, paying for your own insurance, Finding out what supplies, materials, coming up pricing, what services you're gonna offer, all of that jazz, I would be a commission-based stylist. I would just go ahead, bite the bullet, let the salon get some of your money. Work as a commission stylist. They always say, and I say like, everybody can't work for themselves. Everybody can't be a booth runner. Everybody can't, everybody can't thrive as commission-based. Yes, yeah, so I recommend working at a salon for a little bit. At least about six months. At least about, give yourself about six months because I feel like what's Working at a salon spa for six months gives you time to see if you want to move to be a booth renter or it gives you time to kind of get into the industry a little bit to kind of learn how to do services, how booking works, how checking clients out works, how rebooking works. Like it gives you time to learn structure for you to transition into a booth renter. Now you'll hear a lot of people, I don't technically always agree, oh don't go booth renting right after, right after you get out of school. Why not? Why not? Because if you bomb, your services are good, you know how kind of business works, just try it. I always said, look, this is not the video to tell you to go be a commission stylist right out of school. You can go be a booth renter. Grind, and if, but if you booth rent, grind it out grind it out like booth renter is really gonna being a booth renter is gonna set you up if you want to try to be a salon owner like myself so basically i went the booth renting option more so i rented a salon suite so i worked for myself in a i've had different sizes of suites but just to give you a gist, I went from like a 90 to 120 square foot to 140 to a 240. So, or no, 270. So I got to see, you know, the differences in trying to pay booth rent or salon suite rent. And then I, I did that for a couple of years, then I transitioned into opening my own salon. So the only skip I the only step I basically slipped, skipped, I never was a commission base. But look where I am now. So that's why I say that's why I say to say this is not to bash, this is not to say don't go be a booth runner right out of school. Cause honestly, if you ask me, I'ma say try it. At least try it. If you fail, you can always go back. A lot of people, yeah. Y'all too scared, don't be scared. Don't be scared, try it, see how it works for you. Like I say, do more research, um, see what works for you. Um, I think for me, I guess, and I guess other people, it all it comes down to what, what, what do you wanna be in charge of and what do you not want to be in charge of? What do you want to be a headache and what do you not wanna be a headache? You have to learn what you want to do in this industry. There's a lot of different options. So like I said, I hope that helps someone that is in school, just finished school, is about to start school, how you want to go about your business after you finish schooling. So I hope this video helped you. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box below. I would love to answer them. I have been in this industry enough 
long enough to see a lot of different trends, what works for me, what I've seen work for other people, what I've not seen work for people. So if you have a question, please drop it down below because I will definitely answer it. And if you have any other videos that you would like for me to do, please let me know. I would love to help everybody out. The beauty industry is growing. I just want to push out content to help you guys and to educate you guys so you guys know what you guys are getting into. Like, don't sleep on us beauty professionals, okay? Don't, they gonna put some respect on our name, okay? They gonna put some respect on our name. So yeah, so I hope you guys like this video. Uh, make sure you comment, like, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.